And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to some more Global Speedrun Association. We got some Super Mario Odyssey Any% Percent League, a doubleheader, the second coming your way. This one between Little Aggie and Sui Saga. Joining me on the mic today is LimCube. What's going on? Cheers, people. Happy Friday. And how are you today, Dangerous? This is going to be an interesting one. Lil Eggy versus Sui. Haven't seen much from Sui recently, but I know he has been added and he's definitely... Sui's pretty much known to always add stuff early. So can definitely see him go for the new Seastead route. Eggy earlier already confirmed that he's going to try to get that. Have yet to see someone actually miss it because there is a, pride, a, a quite scary... A mistake that can happen along the way. The clip is usually really easy, but while you're grabbing that um, tunnel moon that we previously got as the last moon, you can actually clip back into bounce, and that will lose you a lot of time because the best backup at this point is actually swim back out of the tunnel and then end up getting like talking to the Sphinx, which is incredibly slow because you have to like solve her puzzle, her riddle. Haven't seen that yet. Not yet. And, you know, this league has kind of thrown some curveballs at us. We've seen all sorts of things that we don't want to see. Um, so it just very well may happen one of these days. Hopefully not today. Hopefully not today. The thing is, I think this is most likely going to happen um, when somebody tries to go too fast. If you go, you try to go really fast and grab that moon, uh, the risk is higher. But since this is so new, I think our runners will slow down just a little bit. And they have obviously practiced that already implemented it into their runs i'm assuming so I, i'm not too scared about that one uh these other tricks earlier into the run most of the time looking to be scarier we've seen tons of wallet mistakes metro mistakes recently and lost is still scary every single time yep not to mention just about any kingdom you know luncheon has plenty of potential to kind of mess you up and you know yeah. even more recently we've seen something happen in the moon kingdom mm -hmm. you know just when if you're not on your guard sometimes these things just come out and bite you so right one of the kingdoms where a big time loss is pretty much impossible is cap kingdom the biggest one that there is i mean i guess you can die at the start actually that's something we haven't seen yet and that does still occasionally happen even in the highest level runs where someone bonks against the bridge so actually you can get a pretty big time loss in every kingdom never mind i'm taking that back uh, I, think, I don't know thinking about cascade kingdom where, where is the big time loss there i mean not getting fms for like way too long I've seen someone like jump off. I think it was actually Goyuya, like at the start, trying to go to first moon skip. I guess it's possible. Yeah, I suppose you're not wrong there. Anything can happen. Uh, very clean Cap Kingdom from both of these guys. Looks like they nailed first moon skip together. Sui Saga getting just a little bit better off the draw here and going to be shooting out of the wire just a second faster. Look, looking pretty synced even for both of them too. Uh, we saw some minor differences, but for most of the time, it looked pretty similar. But yes, we're getting the better exit here for Cap. He's going to be heading to Cascade right now. Eggy pretty much one cutscene behind, starting off here. And the pressure in this kingdom, I mean, you just basically said it kind of indirectly, is rather low now. The one optimization that not really anybody opts for right now is um, that wall jump list. Uh, never mind, Sui is basically going for it as a... Wait, both of them? There's no way. No, okay, Eggy just did that up for anyways, but Sui actually getting the wall jump list version of the first moon skip. And as I said at the start of this, Sui tends to add fast and hard strats very early on, such as like the wooded route change. Yeah, fearless in his execution, for sure. And has the consistency to back it up as well, which makes Sui Saga a very fierce competitor. Yep, visibly getting some time set in here now. Uh, in this boss fight, we are able to see it here as uh, Madame Brutal throws Chain Chompkins, which I think is actually the official name of this golden Chain Chomp. A uh, very, very important character for the obviously uh, very complex lore of Super Mario Odyssey. Absolutely. Where would this game be without him? Yeah, exactly. Like without Shane Chompkins, this game wouldn't be the same. Uh, it would it would have like a totally different meaning. But I mean, uh, he's done. He's gone now. It's actually uh, many people that watch this this run don't even know that there's technically a re like an, an encounter where you fight um, this boss again in the Moon Cave. But as far as I know, every like literally every single run, even the all unique moons run, doesn't do that fight. Because yeah. it doesn't reward you with the moon and you can skip it quite easily. So 
nobody that watches like speedruns of this exclusively actually sees that second fight. It's a casual only thing. Including 100%, in fact. And you would think, yep. well, that's silly. Don't you need to fight all the bosses for 100%? But this boss gives you literally nothing. It gives you access to the end of the cave, which, of course, we can exploit and skip entirely. So no need to fight Madame Brutal at all. Does not give you a star on your profile for beating her or anything like that. So 100% doesn't even touch her. Yeah, it's actually quite weird. Like, imagine... That would make world peace interesting, like if, if that was considered to be a world peace boss, but she's not, the game doesn't track her, you still get your little star on your profile if you don't touch her at all. It's completely optional to fight her in casual, and the fight is not really worth, so I can, I can, I can pretty much talk to you guys and say, nope, you don't have to go into the moon cave right now to fight her, it's not too fun, not too interesting. I think the, I think the change up has like six heads or something, and that's like the change. Yeah, I think you might be right there. And aside from that, that's uh, that's just about it. I Maybe there's some terrain thrown in there to kind of make the fight a little bit trickier. I'm not sure. But um, I definitely haven't done it since my very, very first playthrough ages ago. So Yeah. At this point, it's literally ages. This game has passed the one year mark. Um, it's actually getting close to one and a half, which is crazy if you think about that. But um, now, going into sand. Suicide is still keeping the lead. Um, I haven't actually completely seen these action guide skip timings. Sometimes you skip that text. Well, not actually skipping the text faster. The game just lets you through a little bit quicker afterwards. The way that text scrolls at the very end kind of differs, and we don't we are not able to fully explain how or so like what actually causes that. But Sui is taking this lead. Yeah, clean lines from both of these guys so far through this game. Sui Saga just being a little bit more optimal in his movement and being able to kind of take this three second lead. But Sand Kingdom, anything is possible here. We can see all sorts of stuff start to kind of deteriorate coming up to this Dram Strat. Drew, we have actually seen people miss the spin pawn in the past. Um, pretty minor difference but in, in, in a recent race i think someone missed it twice and then the other guy actually caught up at this point most of the people are looking at dram um which is realistic because it's the most likely and the hardest trick the most likely to mess up but there's a couple um curveballs that the game throws at you such as this ice pillar and suicide decides to approach this one with a spin oh and i was about to say it's weird to say weird to see but it does occasionally still happen this ice pack is pretty weird and Eggy actually dropping here yeah. Yep, getting the the classic value dive, just a situation that happens, I think, when the camera starts to move around on you as you're trying to cap throw and then dive in the same situation. Yep. So we will be getting a very nice ice ram right here. His run so far has been looking very clean. He's going to approach the clip section of the run soon, the swing slip section, which will pretty much determine if he can get a nice sand exit. But Eggy, at the same time, also getting hit quite hard here in that ram section. He is actually deciding to get Cradle right now, which I think is... Uh, it's probably still not faster than getting notes, but um, it's an interesting choice. Eggy might also just do like Crate as a personal preference. I'm not too sure about it. I don't think so. Well, he's getting it now. And Sui Clip's first try, which is nice. Yeah, I'm not sure what he is thinking about doing here, if he is opting for the crates. Um, it's a, a bit of a weird choice, because he did get the alcove moon as well. But essentially missing that Dram Strat as a result of the platform being in his way kind of just happens when you um, take a little bit of extra time to get there. Sometimes the platform cycle can kind of ruin your day. Yo, Sui's on a run though, like he just got both clips first try. Hasn't really been making any major mistakes yet. I'm excited to see what this exit will be because he get, he went for like everything. Uh, wall jump his first moon skip, everything in sands looking clean. Um, excited to see what he will get. Little laggy. Looks like he didn't get very many coins in that situation at all, but he might be okay actually. 129? That should be fine. Yeah, he should, he should be okay. And if he isn't, it's not too big of a deal to go to seaside first at all. Uh, doesn't really lose any time. Just need to think about it uh, when that choice happens after you've beat Metro Kingdom. Or I guess clear Metro Kingdom initially. Ooh, Suicide are trying to go very optimal. They're only moving the characters like a pixel. I feel like he might have sensed that he's actually on a pretty good pace, but he really was for the sand exit. So maybe he wanted to like 
do, make it as good as possible, but that surely lost him about two seconds, so his very optimal pace might not happen anymore, but it's still a very solid performance from Sui so far. Absolutely. You might be looking at a, um, a 10 a x yeah. pace coming out of Sand Kingdom still, which is phenomenal stuff. Uh, would have, oh, maybe not oh. anymore. <laughs> Doing some acrobatics on the tops of these trees here. Um, not a big deal. Was able to climb up this second one and get the moon he needs. Yeah, would be surprised. He might still barely get like an 09, but imagine both of the mistakes wouldn't have happened. This could have been like a 10 03 or something ridiculous. Like, uh, yeah, okay, this is gonna be like 13. Like 11, I think 10, 11. But it would, would have definitely been a very nice exit without these mistakes. Well, they happened, and it's going to cause Agi to um, catch up a little more. But uh, Suicide should be taking his lead out of sand. Yep, 10, 11, nothing to sneeze at. Very good pace from Suicide. Little Agi just missing Dramstrat. His Sphinx clips were pretty decent. So. Pretty solid exit time from him as well. We're looking at about 15 seconds of difference between these boys so far. Looking to be around that. Now Lake though, I am pretty sure Eggy has recently looked at Lake Clip. He's been learning it, but I know that Suicide obviously has been doing this for quite a while. So this, I, I would be very surprised if Eggy uses this immediately in a race. So I'm pretty sure that this is going to be an advantage that if it works, it's going to be in Suicide's favor if he gets it. Certainly. Um, haven't seen little Eggy perform Lake Clip in these races yet. But you never know what kind of happens behind the scenes. So Yusaga definitely has been. Yeah. The thing is, in that case, I actually know. Because Eggy was asking for some advice for that clip specifically. So I know he has been looking at it. But this is still pretty rough to save time. So Sui, I think second try on his cap throw there. Getting it gets the up throw. So he will get the checkpoint, will get the clip. If, uh, I mean, there's pretty much not much that can go wrong anymore. Eggy is not going to opt to go for it yet in this particular race. So it looks like Sui will be gaining some additional time save here over Eggy off of just not f having to fight the boss. Yeah. And so later on the Metro. Usually two or three attempts. And if you switch to Pro Cons, or sorry, Joy Cons, just for that down throw as well, looks to save about four or five seconds optimally. So as long as you do it within the first two or three attempts, you're still saving time over the safer route. Yeah, for sure. Up until the very end, it's actually not too noticeable. It gets really noticeable um, whenever you see the guy that fights the boss take the multi-moon. Because then you realize how long they're cutting. Because technically, Eggy was definitely behind starting um, that kingdom. And now he's already getting his quote-unquote last moon being a triple moon. So Zyga is still not even... has now started to make his way over to his last moon. And he's maybe actually going to touch it at the same time as Eggy will. But then the cutscene is going to come in hard. <laughs> and uh, show why that Lake Lebron is a thing. Yeah, this warp back to the Odyssey, much quicker of a strategy than having to sit through this cutscene here. Spinning around the multi-moon, doing a little celebration. Meanwhile, Sui Saiga doesn't have time for that. He is on his way out already. Yep, and sadly, this won't be the only celebration there in the cutscene. Now he needs to fly away, and when he drops back, he's celebrating again. There's never... Yeah, gotta celebrate, dude. <laughs> well, at least um, peace has been restored for Eggy, uh, which we don't really care about in the any percent run, but maybe some better karma for him. I don't know. He got rid of the boss. The, the Lake Kingdom um, citizens can now live a more peaceful life. Maybe they're going to bless his run. I'm sure the mermaid people are happy, and uh, I don't know. Maybe they will bring some good luck. He just... We just cannot tell. It certainly, if anything, will matter now as um, we start off wooded. And here specifically, um, obviously, Nut Clip comes into play, something that we've seen. I definitely know Suicide miss in the past in some racing appearances. Um, as time progresses, people get better at it and more consistent, but it's no one has like a 100% Nut Clip rate. It's just no thing. 
just can. It's just not a thing. Simple as that. So it can always happen that you drop that. And if you do, there's a backup that you can do that if you get it first try, only loses you like 12. But if you don't go for that backup, you lose like 30 seconds. Ridiculous. Used to be when we first discovered this nut clip route, we were talking somewhere in the ballpark of 20. Optimized movement made it 25. And then shortly after that, we discovered, hey, we don't even need to fight Spewart anymore. And because of that, we were able to save nearly half a minute over this previous route. Suicide also going all the way, going for the tree here. He wasn't able to actually spawn the uproot in quite early enough. You kind of want to manipulate the camera there in the way that you can get an earlier uproot spawn in. Wasn't able to make that happen. So even though it looks like he's currently behind, he is not because he has this additional move. Let's look at the clip though. Eggie will get the clip on his own. Suicide will do the same. Out of bounds move. It will still matter a lot here. Haven't actually seen many people drop. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> yep, I haven't actually seen many people... Wait, actually, I'm gonna wait again. I haven't actually seen many people drop that recently. <laughs> um, it seems like it's been working pretty good for them in the more recent times. Yep, it can certainly be a scary place to be, but as long as you keep your cool and execute flawlessly, you're usually good to go. And I think maybe only one fall out of out of bounds has really happened in this league so far as far as i remember out of out of bounds is also a good one yeah <laughs> you, you, you kind of say that because it's like a place but i guess it's just ha having a fall out of bounds would be uh good enough in this case but yeah it's weird you fall so far out of bounds that you're out of the out of bounds itself so are you in bounds again then or is it like even another place it's like, I don't know. It's, it's like it's Inception, just out, of, out of bounds, basically. <laughs> I think it's like Inception. You just keep getting deeper. Jesus. <laughs> Video games are weird. Well, we see right now how Stu Sega is going to be able to potentially save time. He definitely did have a rough, rougher section there in the out of bounds portion. He needs to make this for our road skip work now, though. And we've seen people miss that. Very interesting angle. Tries to play a little bit more safe. Jump, long jumping right there. He needs to still get this portion of the floor roads because a death here would still cause him to spawn back all the way at the shop. The first time he's safe again would be once he actually uh, enters the tower. So this move is still scary, but now we can actually see his lead back at it again. He skipped that moon and the piranha there. And this oh no, Eggie though, dropping the trick. He will spawn at the piranha at least though, because he got that as a checkpoint. Yes, thankfully that whole cutscene does provide you with a little bit of a safety net. He's just going to take the easy route here. Looked like he dropped like a hat dive or something like that. The game just uh, not really giving him what he needed there. Respectable, respectable. Um, no real need to try to go for that again. It wouldn't actually really have been, far been faster at that point. The main reason that saves time is because you kind of like buffer the spin point out of the cutscene and it's just a little bit quicker. But Eggy not wanting to go for it again after a pretty costly miss. Suiced would it other than that little out of bounds struggle though has been looking pretty good. And he's about to make his way over to Flooded Pipeway. Um, it is worth to say though, I think actually this morning I was watching Goyuya, very skilled Japanese one that was been, has been brought up in this league quite a few times. Um, who just recently got into the streaming side of things, so I wasn't really able to ask him much about participating yet. He's also very young and he's also not from this um, continent even. Also not from mine, he's from J Japan. But he actually got a an 18-11 wooded exit. Oh, yikes. That, that, that is just uh, absolutely ridiculous. The Suicide is probably going to be looking at something like a, like a 25 or something. It's actually going to be more. It's going to be like a 27, which is still... Um, Good, but an 1811 is like absolutely ridiculous. Yep, it's unheard of pace for sure. Yeah. Perfectly uh, executed first five kingdoms. But yeah, if you're getting an 182x, you are definitely looking at still being within 100 territory. So, yeah, very good run by Suicide, I guess, so far. Absolutely, some minor mistakes in, in sand, some minor mistakes in wooded there with the out of bounds struggles. But still a very solid run. Definitely 100 pace, for example. Um, Eggy definitely got a little bit bullied here and wooded, specifically at this flower road skip section. It's gonna try to run it back here, but um, this race is still very long. Cloud, famously, a section where Suicide 
did have some issues in the past. Um, seem to have solved them, but after that we immediately go into Lost, so this section will cause um, some sweating here for these runners. Yeah, Monka Giga moment to be sure. Two seconds. Into the second phase. This is the hardest one in my opinion. Really having to try and set up your distance uh, versus Bowser's hats there. You can use some of the lower platforms to kind of make that easier on yourself. Uh, just kind of gauges your height a little bit better. But Sweet Saga not having any problems here. Yeah. Yeah, in this one I think there's only two different types of platforms. I think in the Bowser one there's like three. But um, it's it slightly matters, and you can still make every platform work. Some just might be a little bit easier. Certainly. All right, and like you're also going for these little Bowser manipulation jumps, where he makes him only jump one space. That saves very little time over the course of the fight, but you kind of want to get everything you can in this auto scroller. Now, Suicide is basically at the opposite of an auto scroller, Lost, which is two minutes of insane movement and then you're out of there that's literally basically the best description for lost there is no cutscene in lost um yep the cage actually doesn't have a cutscene for breaking so it's only moon cutscenes and then you leave <laughs> actually never really thought about that but i think that's correct yeah you're absolutely right about that yeah, the... all blocks and cages breaking actually don't have any cutscenes they just break and the wrecked rock block doesn't have any sort of moon spawning yep. cutscene either the moon just kind of pops right out very handy makes this kingdom feel very very fast um, which can be to your detriment sometimes sometimes you uh you feel like if you miss up a part of lost it kind of ruins the whole flow of the kingdom so you have to be very careful here yeah there, there is a cutscene in lost so we hope that we won't see that and suicide just got rid of it by um hitting the bird there and basically just passing him but for everybody that just recently tuned in, it's an interesting fact that the way this route works basically tries to avoid Klepto, who is the bird comeback from SM64 there, um, throughout the kingdom. Avoid his trigger, and then once you actually get close, activate that trigger so he won't steal your head. If you encounter this kingdom casually, you might have remembered that it, actually this game tries to take your head away here and um, kind of wants you to explore this kingdom without having access to the head after getting used to it. Certainly. It's the main kind of plot line, uh, focal point, I guess, of this particular kingdom. Otherwise, it does seem like kind of a boring place to be. Not a whole lot really happens here. And as far as speedrunning is concerned, that's kind of good for us. We just kind of zip on in and leave as fast as we can. True. So it's like now actually being at a, in the cutscene again, but this is at the point where the kingdom is over. He's already globed in. Uh, has been, once again, a very, very solid... Uh, lost actually for example yesterday people hyped up Goyuya's sub 22 lost exit and that was only 11 seconds slower so still a phenomenal run here for Sui no major mistakes at some sloppiness and like out of bounds in in wooded and um once again the sand mistakes but other than that this is pretty amazing oh eggy will still get the moon very clutch there he could have missed that but he gets the moon might end up dying not even so he what will be save. fine very nicely done yeah, just getting Cappy back in time to be able to kind of pop up over the bridge there. For sure. Let's see. Suicide now approaching Night Metro, and this will be the first major mistake here. As he tried to go for a wall jump, I'm not sure what caused him to get this rainbow spin. Probably losing around like four seconds here on that fall. Um, that wouldn't kill a very good run if he just keeps going now, it would just add another slight mistake. But one of the bigger ones. And it stands out in a, in a run like this. Yep, certainly. Little, every little thing essentially just kind of matters when, when it comes to a run like this. One that's just doing so well. Sure. Eggy also starting up now as Sega climbs up the city. It's not opting for the kind of elevator cycle skip there which that would suit Sui's playstyle and him adding strats early but it's a very unnecessary strat and actually exactly that strat like the elevator skip was what ended Goyuya's very good run yesterday uh, this this morning I think it was um people were talking about it a lot and this specific elevator cycle kind of got him to to lose it 
because he ended up missing it in diet. Yeah, you hate to see it, but Goryuya definitely is the runner to go for all of the craziest strategies and just a movement magician, you could call him. For sure. Innovator, for sure. I mean, we, we praise especially recently Circle, uh, Circle, people like Circle and Tuval for coming up with unique glitch discoveries and routing ideas as well. But um, Goyuya is a real, real strat innovator in this category. So many strats we do these days have been initially in innovated by him. And I guess early on it was Shaden, most, like mostly, that came up with the, the fast strats. But after that, after he kind of stopped uh, have being interested too much. I mean, obviously, there's other people. I I, I don't want to like forget any names. I mean, Yash also being huge there. But Goyuya definitely a huge innovator for movement in the run. Yeah, movement specifically. There are a lot of other contributors in the community that kind of um, provide routing differences, and I think that that can sometimes be just as important. Sure. But yeah, Goryuya, definitely the kind of um, movement innovator, looking at different ways to make Mario move just a little bit faster in every single section of the game. Two seconds acquired from Sweet Sega, a pretty decent one. Eggy is currently waiting for his pattern to be revealed. Um, this phase is awfully long. I don't know why they decided to have the Wiggler attack three times with the useless attack. Like every boss attack they have here is actually useless. Some bosses actually threaten to kill you because they are weird to fight fast. I guess it would be like Molosk and Cocketeel and it's it's still unlikely to die to them. It's just a little bit more scary. And I, I guess the attacks at least threaten you. The, the Mecha Wiggler attacks really don't threaten you at all because you can just stand in, in them. The fire in Bowser yesterday, we've seen people roll below it, so... Tech's kind of useless, dude. But uh, still taking the Wiggler down here in two cycles for Eggy, so he's done with them. Yeah, I learned something yesterday. I didn't actually know that you could roll underneath. The roll? That. Yeah, that was that was cool to see. Was a big fan of that one. And clean drive by Scoot Clip from Sui Saga here. Good way to start off the day metro portion now i feel like day metro is kind of it's probably one of the most outdated kingdoms nowadays you know what i mean it's uh <laughs> we're, we're approaching a point where the strats that we've been doing in day metro have basically been concrete since months months ago For sure. a lot of other kingdoms have kind of got a bit of a facelift but metro kingdom is still kind of one that we just do the same way we have for a while there are obviously some um, innovations that we have theorized. You know, we've talked about going to Captain Toad and doing um, Notep, for example. We've also talked about bullet building, uh, which kind of fits in with that. So there are opportunities here to save time, but they are currently RTA not viable. Yeah. Uh, might not ever be. Um, especially as long as strats like the new C set one gets found, which saves like more than the bullet build rod, but it's like absolutely quote unquote easy to do, people won't have to go for that. And these time saves are still coming in there. There hasn't been really a super long PB drought yet, where people were so desperate for three seconds that they would that they would have like thrown away their run for it. Yeah, not yet, anyways. Luckily, we do have some, like we mentioned, some excellent route innovators working behind the scenes, bringing us some time saves that we initially had no idea about. And as we approach Seaside Kingdom, of course, it's it's still a very exciting thing to talk about, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. And it's not done. Um, a clip like that will have way more potential usage um, than what we've tested yet and even though we might already just Im immediately found like the best any percent route there's going to be a bunch of testing with other moons other movement and so on and other categories will have like a field day with this wow so we say with a very major mistake now for the first time that eggy bonking at the same time but this will be quite massive here metro not treating him well as he's about to dive over to the trash can that ends up falling down Yep, unfortunate situation there. Fiax was really feeling it. Like his run has been very good. He's been going for everything. Everything's kind of been working too. So this guy is still putting in the work. It's definitely visible. Could still potentially be on pace for maybe uh, a sub 30 coming out of Metro here. Yep, exactly. Up. 
and he losing a little bit of speed there on his roll can still will still make it over there to actually get the moon but he's also catching up by just a little bit just because suicide definitely did make a few mistakes a nice synced moon grab two moons apart oh wait i think i'm lying yeah it's like three wait isn't it uh, three I guess the there moment. were two. I guess there were two moons in between them, but so uh, yeah, it is still probably looking to be a little bit more than thirty seconds. But Suicide now making his way over to the Odyssey. His coin count is looking healthy enough, one hundred and six. So we'll see him go to snow. Let's see if Eggy has been doing a good job. He's also actually at one hundred and six, so he was also able to keep to stay alive after lost. Won't have any issues here to go to snow for both of them. Yep, thankfully, no need for Seaside first backups here. So Seaside coming in just over 30 minutes, but this is still an incredible exit time. And still looking at some high 100 pace, potentially. Yeah, at this point, I'd say yes. It's looking like a th like 18, 30, 18. Maybe just barely possible still, but would need to be pretty good from now on. And that's crazy if you think about that, because... Um, the mistakes haven't been too heavy. I guess the, the bonk is actually really costly because you have to warp back, which loses 10 seconds immediately, and then do all of the movement again, which probably loses another 8. So um, yeah, definitely a rough mistake. Two rough mistakes here in Metro, adding up to around the 20-second time loss. But still on a confident lead here. Needs to go to, through Snow, though, which does have some... I mean, this is really true for every kingdom now. It has some very tricky... Um, movement sections and tricks that you actually need to get to um, get through successfully and lo and snow especially with hard movement inside of Shiveria and also snow in the very end. And all of these things can come to a head and you just never know if the lead is going to change but yeah Suisaga still like we said on a very good run when one kingdom loses 20 seconds and you're still on pace to you know have a top 10 time essentially you know you're doing something right. For sure. Definitely. Hasn't been really much. And, and nothing drastically. Like, no no deaths. The fall was pretty much almost equal to a death. But yeah. Still looking good. So, Eggy now getting Captain Toad. We already brought up coin counts. All good for them. A slight instance of difference that we might see is that snow clip because Suicide has been running World Peace for a while. He should be confident with going for that clip, but any percent runners have been adding it to their repertoire. So this might be something that he's going to go for here. Not necessarily get it, but if he does, this is a nice time save. He will definitely go for it, and he's going to be able to clip through the wall very fast. Or a bounce movement, kept that into the loading zone. Hot. Yep. In my opinion, definitely if you've practiced it and you know what your timing is all about definitely worth going for you know if you do miss it you kind of just end up a little bit further back than you would if you didn't go for it maybe 0.5 of a second lost by going for it and missing so in my opinion very worth going for yeah let's see eggy probably not attempting it here most of the time you would see either the very very top of any percent right now go for this clip or people that actually have previously been messing with world peace especially in world peace this particular clip is actually the best version of clipping in general in darker side it's almost as far as just getting like a first try downstairs clip so it's it's definitely um, a good idea to just try and assure a good exit there but eggy saving himself an un a very uh, costly fall there. Uh, had had to wall jump there a little bit, which is definitely not optimal, but still not too bad. At least he's alive. Alive and well, good to go through the stage. Did leave one spiny alive, but it was one way at the edge of the stage. So did have to kind of backtrack to get mm -hmm. him off. But aside from that, good um, blowy joey, I guess as we call them, uh, good typhoon room. Yep. Definitely. As long as you're living, dude, this room's good. <laughs> He's now making his way over to Goomba room, which uh, Suisaga is just done with. He will still be in the room at the same time. 
as Sui is, but he's already leaving the pipe. Also, really visually showing how slow our like movements and actions are in this room, stacking up these four Goombas, waiting for the ice pillar to fall, pressing the button, getting the moon, watching a cutscene. It's actually pretty much like we had that first moon already seems slow, like getting four Goombas, watching the cutscene, but there's no better options in Chevaria, sadly. And it's so in general. Just very, very limited uh, initial kingdom visit. Yeah, only one moon available to you in the outside portion, that being Captain Toad, as well as all of the moons that are available to you on the inside, but your pool is extremely limited. But Snowdrop is another moon on the outside that the game doesn't intend you to get. Suicide is currently trying, wasn't able to get the vault their first try, but didn't end, end, end up, didn't end up falling and is getting it on his first real attempt. So it's going to be at least happy about being at the other side. Yep, and back to the Odyssey to dump his moons in. He is good to go on his way to Seaside. Yep, Seaside time. Almost for both of them. Eggy still has to go through Snowdram here, as Suisega is going to mesh through the dialogue and the cutscenes leading into the kingdom. Let's see if he has a good time as well. He might actually be able to save some time over so if he gets the vault for sure. I don't like that vector. So I would be surprised if that works. Yep. That's, um, like, usually you say, um, sometimes people's setups look different, but he got, like, almost no speed there from the vector, so I would have been very surprised if he made that work. He needs to be quick now, hopefully making that work on a second try. Ooh, he's, like, not actually vectoring at all, it looks like. But maybe this is his setup, but maybe also not, because he's definitely having some, some issues there. Yeah. Does look like he's trying to rush this just a little bit, perhaps, and that is going to be the downfall. But you're absolutely right. Doesn't look like he's getting a full vector on his approach here. This looked better, but I'm still not sure if I like it as much. He okay. will get it. Okay. That, he, it was visible that his vector got a little bit more speed, at least. Sometimes you just forget holding fully left there. This is something I constantly need to remind myself into. Hopefully being able to make it to the other side, and he will. But definitely pretty heavy time loss there in snow. And um, time loss matters in this league as the better you do, the more points you get. And Suicide are currently on a very good run. It's in a nice spot to get quite a few points out of this one. And now approaching his way um, to go over to the cheap cheap here. He deciding to go for the cheap cheap. I'm a big fan. And he was, yeah, that was a nice capture as well. Holding neutral there, capturing the cheap cheap fast. A little bit faster than getting the gushing over there. As long as he doesn't take damage on the fish. And yeah, this is the seaside routing change and using a new out of bounds clip that kind of manipulates the forces that the game um, has that try that tries to kind of keep you away from going out of bounds. To clip is exactly using that uh, with the cheap cheap and get the movie previously gotten last um, from out of bounds and then enter another Sphinx. Uh, another Sphinx clip basically has been called Sphinx Dip before because we used the water there um, and saves around four to five seconds. It's actually very safe to say that it saves five at this point because we have seen the world record of IELTS improved by over five seconds now. Yep, people still kind of grinding away at it. We do have a 321 Seaside IL time now by Stravos. You know, Stravos being the one who kind of dominates Seaside wasn't going to let his title go that easy. And so he has regained from what we know so far to be the best Seaside time. Gets the clip first try here. All you need to do is kind of move away from the uh, cheap cheap that doesn't get affected by these forces. And that's a very solid moon grab. That's the one scary part here that you actually clip back into bounce. In bounce after you do the clip. And that's very optimally done. It gets the moon shake very far away. You kind of extend your hitbox um, of the cheap cheap as you go for those motion control shakes or spins with the stick. But the shakes are just faster and easier to do in that case. We'll get the swings with a very solid C side. So um, it's definitely going to be saving time with that particular approach. Yeah, especially over the old projected route, for sure. Going to be kind of clipping a couple seconds off, as well as just having a very solid seaside in general. So he's going to be on his way now to Luncheon, where I, I think out of all the kingdoms in this game, Luncheon has caused these runners in this league the most trouble so far. Absolutely. Now heading to Luncheon, as you just brought up, um... As he does, we will have some time again to look at Aggie's current um, 
current state here in Seaside is currently getting the not second to last moon anymore. This is still two moons to go after this one now. But um, we'll then set up for the clip, which is what we are interested about. We need to be sure to swim very fast to the edge. Now move away from the cheap, cheap enough. This should work. Would be surprised if it doesn't. And it will. And now gotta be safe here with that moon grab. Haven't seen anybody miss this yet. Nice. So this is actually optimal. You kind of want to stay away from the wall. Don't move into this because you will be stuck in the tunnel. Warping out won't do you much. So you need to swim back out and then get the things literally to talk to you and stop the quiz. But so far, pretty sure since this has been found. Actually, I haven't been able to catch the last race. I'm not sure if you were commentating, but the races that I've been commentating, which I think were three, everybody got the clip first try and everybody saved time with it for sure because they didn't clip back in the so. Yeah, I think... You know what? I was actually racing. I got mine the first try, but okay. Dan Stan, I think, did say something about not having a very good seaside. It's possible he didn't get the clip, or maybe it was just maybe. some uh, some movement in seaside. I wasn't entirely sure. Yeah, a lot of the hard movement now got taken away. We still do the first three moons. Um, the first and the third one usually known to eventually cause some trouble because there's some ledges where it's easy to bonk on and the third one kind of throws off your like hands to eye perception i guess but uh, the rest the underwater section now very lenient always was um with that clip there's that one scary moment where you grab that moon from out of bounds and after that it's it's pretty straightforward pretty relatively easy to do still even with a new discovery yep so easy that if you are just looking to get into speedrunning super mario odyssey and you're looking at a seaside route, it yeah, wouldn't it even make sense to go for the old one anymore. Yeah, it true. isn't actually that easy. Like like nodes, runners like runners have been doing nodes with the with the refresh way harder. And without the refresh, it's just like even way slower. And you can drop nodes just as easily. Like missing nodes can happen easier as a new runner. Like if you do a seaside right now, you should probably just learn the one that these guys are doing. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so you second now grabbing the turnip, um, still in that plaza section here, bonking intentionally to grab the moon just on the very lowest section possible to be able to backflip earlier after he does. And now it's gonna make it over to the fork room. Wow, very spicy movement there from Suisaga, getting the roll cancel yep. and absolutely annihilating this Potobu. Was able to get his cap throw out before he even hopped out of the lava. Usually you see these runners go for this camera manipulus version and they are just making the cap uh, uh, hit the lava bubble right in time, but Stui Saiga absolutely destroying this. Oh, unfortunate damage there from Lelegi. Let's see if he's going to be smart enough to get the checkpoint here. There's a very neat chance for him to do so. This checkpoint there on the left. Let's see. He will do that. Smart. Very smart. Not going to lose two seconds off of that movement, but he won't get a damage refill now. So, uh, okay. That, that, that wouldn't have happened <laughs> normally, but still smart choice to get the checkpoint. Interesting camera there as well for Eggy as he breaks that crate. And Sui now making his way over to turnip clip, going for a long jump there to build momentum with the turnip throw, playing it a little bit more safe. Very far to the left there, he's probably good to go though. Yeah, this looks good. Should probably work first try and will. Yeah, it did look like he kind of took a roundabout way to set up that turnip clip, but just looking to get a nice angle on his throw to make that clip work without having to readjust. For sure. I guess it has to go through that turnip clip section. As we say, guys, making his way over to the torch. Needs to light that one. After that, there's one additional ground pound mode that he needs to grab, and then he will be off to the mole, to the um, meat motel.
Yep, really hard to say anything that went wrong in that Luncheon Kingdom. That was spicy stuff from Sui Saga. Yep, and he's cooking up the moon right here. About to leave Lilek, like, actually not getting that potable jump, which is it's actually crazy if you like ju just analyze a run very like ju like input by input almost or like section to section. Stuff like these jumps is something that people eventually might need to take like an hour um, to actually understand. And these kind of things are not really the woo! <laughs> that, that throw was nice. He actually kind of oh, we need to be careful that the Panbro doesn't snipe his turnip. That, that spot won't work, but he probably tries to take the Pembro first, then reset up the turnip. And hopefully makes it work. This look good now. But yeah, these tiny little things are sometimes not even easily visible. Something like these portable jumps, but all of them are actually pretty interesting, um, like non-intended tricks that we do. Uh, uh, some of them just look natural, but they are actually not. Like the portable jumps being one of the best instances. That's not how the game intends you to go there, and it usually doesn't let you do unless you um, pay enough attention and go for um, a specific way of jumping there. Yep, just minor things making this game just a tiny bit faster that the game probably didn't. It's kind of in that gray area between glitch and trick, I suppose, where, you know, obviously the game didn't intend for this to happen, but we still manipulate the techniques of the game anyways. Also, getting bullied here by this, Ooh, rock, tomato. this hot tomato as well as just some value dives and some very unfortunate situations here. But he's going to be able to come up over the mountain, finally. <laughs> Dude, the tomato. This tomato is super under... Is, is this the only spot where there's tomatoes? No, I think there's tomatoes in the sub room, right? In like the portable sub room, but I can't think... I mean, I haven't actually 100% the game myself yet. I'm about to do that soon when I'm going to be doing my first 100% run. But uh, I can't think of too many places where these tomatoes even like... Are being used at there all? There are like, a couple locations actually. Most of actually, them are luncheon or sub areas. So sub areas there, then, yeah, there yeah. are tomatoes in that Potobu sub area that used to be in the any percent route. There's also some hot tomatoes in the outfit room in luncheon as well. A couple hiding in oh, there. Okay. There's also some in all of places. There's actually some in darker side as well during that little Potobu area towards the middle. Yes. Okay. 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 But yeah, very strange enemy. Um, they kind of just melt into this magma ooze. I don't know what it is about um, all of the red liquids in this game just being like molten hot. I don't know why the tomatoes are so roasty toasty, but uh, they definitely help in a situation where you gotta be the potaboo and get places. Yep, that's I guess a little mechanic can kind of melt them to get a little puddle for the lava bubble to survive in. But that's about it. Not really seeing too much of them over the course of the run. But yes, yeah, Suicide is really building a solid lead right now, already in the last phase of the dragon fight, so it's just about done here. And Eggy hasn't even just, hasn't even started the fight yet. Suicide might arguably actually be able to grab the multi-moon or even globe before Eggy kind of starts his fight. Uh, maybe not globing, but um, definitely solid lead that he's currently building. It is not completely over with all of the stuff we've recently seen, but this late game is starting now. Bowser's and then only Moon to go, and uh, all of this lead that he's currently building is looking very, very healthy, and he might be able to transition that into a nice point game. Yeah, we were talking yesterday about clean sweeps and not any races having gone completely in one runner's favor. The first time it happened actually was earlier today was that race between myself and Dansta. We did get to witness the very first clean sweep uh, due to some unfortunate circumstances by one runner. I won't mention who, but he is uh, he's very sad about it. But hopefully if Sui Saiga is able to continue this major... Um, uh, kind of sweep through this game. He's already on ex excellent pace, low 101, still very possible. And if Little Aggie does make a, even a couple of minor mistakes, we might just see another one. Whoa. But um, we are still in ruins, so it is at least on Aggie's side. So it is a good point to bring up. Our first event happening pretty shortly now. It's definitely approaching about two and a half months left, but we will run pace a live competitive speedrunning event 
at the end of April to kind of bring these leagues to an end. The best of the best will compete there um, out of the SM64 70 star league this league and also the celeste league so definitely need to catch that and if you if you think that's interesting if you want to meet people like dangers and me if you want to uh, watch live competitive speedrunning action just have a good time watch live showcases and events um you guys are probably good to go and type an exclamation mark tickets and check out all of the detailed info on that smash.gg registration page and check it out potentially see you there definitely great event in the works should be very exciting. Some top level um, speedrunning action here. The first event of its kind, as far as I know, where a lot of speedrunning events tend to be kind of showcase events, charity events, that kind of thing. There will be a little bit of that. The stream will be going live 24 hours a day for the four days that we are at the event. So there will be a couple of showcase things, but also the kind of pinnacle of the event itself being these league finals so you do not want to miss that for sure and right now Suicide is making his way over to that last chart charts have been looking pretty solid one of the more intense sections of Bowser's and we'll grab that one here Suisaga looking to have a pretty healthy lead still. A little laggy just approaching this Bowser's Kingdom into the first chunk while Suisaga is on his way to the third. Gonna be setting up for Bowser Dram here in just a moment. Has to climb these stairs, set up a spin pound in a very particular location so that he can do a dive back and into a capture warp. Very, very slick from Suisaga nice. there. Yeah, Sui, once again, this run is pretty phenomenal, and he makes it really hard for Eggie to catch up right now. He's really building and building his feet even still. Um, this is the, he did get attacked by the Spiny earlier there in Shards, but other than that, this Bowser has also been looking good again, and he has a pretty phenomenal run overall. Suisaga with the first person strats here as well. Getting those optimal bomb hitbacks. Now making his way over to Topper. Another um, boss refight before he's rolling towards his last moon and then up all the way towards mech. Eggy at the same time doing shards, um, fairly safe strats, not the very hardest strats. Uh, it's mainly, I mainly say that this was solid shards for sure, I mainly say that because this is one of the most optimizable sections of the run compared to other sections. I guess you can, for example, go for that capture warp here, but overall it's quite insane. How much time you can like save and shards for example i can recall actually having a great time in the early game of bowser's feeling confident and then comparing myself um, here at that moon to someone that actually isn't doing um that is doing that is doing like optimal shards movement and you might be like 10 seconds off just because someone is just having a way better um early time here in in bowser's Oh no, Aggie Oh no! Home. Aggie trying to go for that. Um, Bowser Dram strategy himself. Just a little bit of a shaky setup and couldn't seem to get his hat to go in the right direction. Unfortunate situation there. He's gonna have to set up the backup here. So, I think what ended up happening there is um, that he actually hit the torch with Cappy. Because usually, Cappy would stay out there for you to basically have a like, free backup, you know? Um, but it wasn't there, so he couldn't shake and kind of save himself going towards the wire. Which is too bad. You hate to see it. Probably about 20 seconds of time lost there. But now he's into the Harriet fight, and he will be looking to kind of finish these off nice and clean and give pursuit to Suisaga, who is in, on his way to the Rubble Brutal fight now. Big make or break moment. As long as Sui plays clean, um, he's going to be running away with this one. He's going to start with the climb here. 
gets the optimal distance there to be able to pull off the backflip strategy. Extremely clean climb from Satsui Saiga. Getting the second hit. Going to be diving his way back now and into this kind of invulnerable section. Now, anybody who has not seen this fight before, essentially, you might think, oh, well, just hit him. Why, why are we waiting for this guy to run around? Um, for some reason, the bubbles do not allow you to hit them during this phase. You can see that the Robo Brood does have some rainbow legs, and he is invulnerable at that time. So, setting up for Harriet, third, and the target acquired. Spin Pound is perfect. That is a textbook Robo Brutal fight from Sui Saiga. I'm going to be very happy with that. And again, still on 101 pace for sure. Meanwhile, little Aggie just grabbing this story moon from defeating the double brutal battle here. And he is on his way, giving hot pursuit. Yep, probably a good time to kind of gauge a distance between these two runners now. Aggie just is done with is just about done with his bunnies split there. And usually the best max splits take around three minutes and two. 2x let's say that so we have and this cutscene takes around like a minute so we could probably say that suicide is probably having a lead about like two minutes and 20 seconds two minutes and 10 seconds something around that is what i'm like initially gauging right now i haven't completely compared their exists yet but this is probably a good time to do so as suicide ends bowser's and once again, he is basically banking in more and more points the better he's doing so eggy definitely needs to Try to match Suicide's uh, fight at least. Uh, maybe even out, like outspeed him in some sections, cleaner spin points or whatever, because every second matters at the end of the day. And he might lose points that he could have gotten if he made one less mistake. Yep, and Moon Kingdom is a excellent place for this run to kind of swap points very quickly. We've seen some very unfortunate situations. We've seen some 2D deaths. We've seen some um, problems with getting the moon cave skip to work in your favor, uh, diving off the cliff. We've seen all sorts of crazy stuff, and those things do waste quite a lot of time because you get sent back to the beginning of those chunks, to the Odyssey or to the beginning of the escape section, and that can lose a lot of time. So. So Sui is off to Moon, but Eggy is now positioning himself soon to be able to hit Harriet third and potentially also acquire his target being Spewart in this case. Sui Saga is just going to be busy with some pretty boring but um, technical outside Moon movement here with these vectors. And it looks like Eggy might actually not be going for Harriet third. It's going to play it quote-unquote safe. I'm still personally highly in the favor of going for target acquired since this third bubble hit seems a little bit harder to me but eggy is confident he does get it actually this is also slower by around one and a half maybe two seconds at this point of optimization but uh, personal preference for him falling there is obviously going to lose you more than two so it takes that doesn't want to really fall here is able to to stay closed um, close enough at least to potentially save some points and Suisega is not done yet. He has still some chances to drop a good amount of points or even a win potentially because we've seen these very ridiculous pillar room deaths. Now, now, now it's something that's actually happened. So it's not pure theory anymore that it might happen in a race. Yeah, not entirely off the table. You do not want to see it, but just it has already happened in these leagues. Literally anything can happen. More realistically, uh, mistakes that can happen here to cause Sui to at least drop some points to Eggy, um, even now because his run has been so good, has been really, really good. Um, actually, really, really good if you look at the timer, even still. Uh, some visible mistakes, but still a very solid run. It's probably going to be like a mid 101 pace if I see this correctly. So, um, looking very, very nice. Second phase here, again, probably the hardest of the three phases in this fight. But gets it just fine. Little Aggie finally on his way to the Moon Kingdom himself. And looks like he'll probably just regain control of Mario and start making his way through the Moon Kingdom just as Suisaga finishes off this final phase. Yeah, about to hit the heads 
right here. This is the last phase for Sweet Sega. And he might actually be realistically still be... Now I think I think saying like a mid-101 phase is the most realistic, but it might be like a 101 2x still, which is absolutely stunning. Certainly. That's and one of the best race times we've seen so far, in fact. So as long as everything goes well in this escape, we will be seeing... Maybe not, I don't think the best race time in this league, but very, very close to it. Yeah, absolutely nicely done so far. Um, See Sega now entering the real escape section. Things that is still on his mind is gonna be that first triple jump here. It's not really on your mind. You just gotta briefly pay attention to actually space out the triple jump correctly. This one here. And after that it is gonna be um, to d skip and pillar room. This is, this is a very rare case, though, where I would actually think if Suisega was to die in the pillar room, it might not necessarily even over, be over still. Like, he might probably still be in the lead. Yeah, he does have a very commanding lead still so far, so it would probably take a lot of spaghetti as well as a pillar room death to bring Aggie back into this. One unfortunate fireball from Suisaiga there. But as he breaks open this wall, time is looking like it's a 10012 for the white screen, which means that he could potentially still come in 1010x, in fact. This is actually ridiculous. Um, he definitely made some visible mistakes throughout the run, but it also shows us how good of a run this was. Like, this is a run where he bonked against the trash cat in Metro and fell down all the way and warped back up. He also. Um, made that mistake at the start of Night Metro, almost fell down and out of bounds, made some mistakes in notes and at the cactus, but this is pretty much already, this is already almost summing up everything and just goes to show that he's probably actually going to be able to still get that OX here as this pillar is falling and he, yep, he definitely uh, will. 101 OX being his final time, a very incredible time for us. Fantastic, and that itself might actually be the best race time we have seen in this league so far. Crazy. I think the, the last best one was maybe Stravos with a 101.14. So he's like finishing off with an 05. Jesus, that run was definitely on PB pace in Metro because as far as I know, his, his PB is still like a high 100 and he lost like 18 seconds from that mistake on the trash can. So crazy stuff. Yep. Amazing considering the nerves that have to be taken into consideration in a race setting like this. Suicide does have to be very, very happy with this result. And it's going to come down to little Aggie now. He can still scrounge a couple of points. He is within that three minute threshold to kind of steal away some of the points, but he has to <laughs> yeah. play this finishing part clean in order to snag a couple. Yeah, he should be fine to get probably like a two or three points out of this as long as he doesn't make any big mistakes. The the if, if you lose by three minutes or more, you will only get one. This is like the one guaranteed point from that additional pool. But every ten seconds that you make it closer in there will reward you with another point. It will also technically steal, quote unquote, steal your opponent. Uh, steal away a point from your opponent, making the entire um, league closer and, give, and obviously also in that case improving your chances of a better placing. But right now, he is going to be going for the 2D skip here. Tries to get that just tight, but fine and well. And interesting camera here, kind of. T I'm not sure if that's on purpose. He's kind of like slanting the camera to the side there, or like tilting it to the side. Um, I don't know. Maybe personal preference, maybe also just unintentional. Yeah, could have just been adjusting the camera for that 2D section a little bit and kind of just what was left is what he was given there. But yeah, 102.45 is he's coming into this pillar's room. Got to make it clean. Couple missed fireballs there. Going to look to set up a couple of extra shots. Does get the first one down though. And yeah, he looks to be very good now to still squeeze out some points there from that additional point pool. Um, 20 on the line, obviously, and we will be able to kind of give you guys an update as this pillar is falling and he's as he's shooting out of the wire. This is looking to be like a th um, like a 4x, if I'm not um, completely off, like just barely. 
I think. But we are at least over the 35 mark. So looking to be slightly more than 2 minutes and 30 seconds. So as, as, if, if my math is not off by much, this is probably going to cause him to get 4 points? I think you're right. I think that's what I was kind of looking at as well, as 4 points from this loss here. Yeah. Definitely a little bit of a rough time throughout the race, but still squeezing out some points there. And then, unfortunately, while being bullied by the game, also having the best league time yet to be matched up against. I think Eggy just joining us now for some post-game thoughts. Um, GG's on um, finishing and GG's on getting the points in. Yep. Still a solid run, still a 103 used to be very impressive and i mean it's obvious that the game kind of treat, didn't treat you too well in some sections but <laughs> at the beginning yeah i had a real rough time i probably lost like 30 ish seconds to to game shenanigans that were completely out of my control but uh i also lost like 40 seconds to missing snowdram twice and that's totally on me but yeah yeah i think I, overall, this is, this is, uh... overall i was pretty happy with it i mean i think i played well for the most part i just kept making like really bad mistakes but i didn't make too many of them i don't think yeah i feel i feel like after snowdom it was really not anything like standing out anymore i get okay i guess that's uh, like I had the yeah, yeah that was no, but that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's also like the one thing that stands out the rest has been looking sort of c set execution went well no clipping back and bounce so being able to i think complete our eight out of eight perfect executions on that new route now just going to show how how easy quote unquote it actually is to to save some time then now with very neat for all runners um, to have that available to them now. And then again, um, while you had a bit of a rough time early on, it's also definitely fair to say that Sue Sega's run was phenomenal. He had, had some very quote unquote big mistakes such as like bonking in Metro and um, at, at the trash can falling down and having to warp back up and these kind of things and still managing to get a 10105. So definitely crazy good run from him. Yeah, absolutely nutty stuff from Sui Saga in this race. And I think the best league time that we have seen this entire season so far. So phenomenal stuff from Sui Saga. GG's to Little Aggie. Um, does got, uh, scrape by with a couple points. I think we said four. So yep. Yay. able to squeak out a little bit of something here. Still doing better than Dangerous Little. <laughs> well, <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> dude, I mean, I'm not even competing. I would probably be at zero points. So just gotta be honest. I just gotta, 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 gotta bring the heat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. If you I can't, just, if you can't take the heat, you get out of the kitchen. So exactly. Well, GG's to everybody, and obviously still had a great time commentating with you, Dangerous, as well. And obviously, Eggy and Sui, who's not here right now, thanks for doing your race with us. Had a lot of fun doing this um, races right now, and any percent in general feels... It's, it's not, it doesn't feel like um, June quite yet when we find Nutley, but it feels very refreshing. It feels very... It feels very um, I guess just alive because new stuff gets found, new glitches get found, routes get checked out, people are PBing, um, records are about to be improved, everybody is looking at like a good PB soon. So very exciting times and more action to be had here on the channel soon. But for now, we are good for an intermission. We will be uh, hosting some SM6470 star in around 30 minutes. So you guys should stay tuned. If you're looking forward to that, and even if you don't, you might want to give it a chance because that action is insane. Such a crazy optimized run, incredibly skilled runners as well. But um, that's going to be it for us. Definitely good stuff today. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to follow the channel for more league action for different games and more high quality speedrun content. And see you guys soon.